For this summer series webinar, we have Kate Forrest and Joe Miller presenting on Farmap 4D. Kate Forrest has been involved with the development of Farmap 4D since it began as a collaborative project called the NRM Spatial Hub. Kate grew up on a dryland mixed farming operation at Stansbury on the York Peninsula before heading to Roseworthy to get a Bachelor of Applied Science in Agriculture. Since then, her career has involved pastoral property management in SA and NT and a couple of stints working overseas in sustained livelihood programs in Sri Lanka and Cambodia. In the last 10 years, Kay has worked for numerous NRM regional organisations while running the National Rangeland NRM Alliance. Joe Miller is currently contracting on Arabella Station near Charlieville and has been using Farmat 4D since its commercialisation. He spent his career working in all aspects of the pastoral in industry across Northern Australia, including NT, Queensland and Northern New South Wales. Joe's expertise includes station management, station infrastructure planning and development, livestock nutrition and management, on-farm R&D and station mapping, mapping. Currently, Joe runs his own business as a pastoral con contractor, specialising in all aspects of station management and infrastructure development, as well as working as a property planning specialist with Farm Map 4D. So, Kat and Joe, happy to answer your queries throughout the course if you need clarification. Just use the hand up button, or if you choose to wait, we'll have plenty of time at the end for questions. And if you do have questions, don't hesitate to type in the, in the chat box as you think of them. And between me, Kate and Joe, we will make sure they get answered. Now I'd like to introduce Kate and Joe to talk on Map Your Place, turning big data into better decisions in the paddock with Farm Map 4D. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you for the opportunity. We were really looking forward to being at the field day in Port Augusta in December uh, last year, but uh, it's been a topsy-turvy sort of time, so we've missed out. Um, we really appreciate that Sal have put on these uh, webinars and that you've um, invited us to, to speak today. Um, thank you to all of the participants for taking some time out on your Wednesday evening. Um, it's not it's not always easy to, to stay focused. Um, Paul's pretty much introduced uh, introduced me. I've been working for Farmat 4D for just over a year, um, and in my previous role with the NRM uh, regional bodies, I was involved with the project that developed the NRM Spatial Hub, which is now known as Farmat 4D. Um, to, uh, Joe is on board. He's had his introduction. He is the go-to today for um, practical applications. Um, he's been on board since uh, the commercialisation of the product and he uses it on the properties that he manages in planning um, property infrastructure where he's contracting and he does the training. Um, so if you sign up, you'll, you'll get to talk to Joe um, and he will teach you how to use Farmat 4D. Um, this evening, the structure will be that I'll just give a little bit of history and background and a PowerPoint um, presentation. Then I will take you into the hub and do a really quick demo of just a couple of the tools um, that are available in there. And then we'll finish up the presentation and, and we can have questions. If you've got burning questions on the way, um, when we swap between the PowerPoint and the, um, the live demo, there'll probably be a little bit of time to fill, so Joe might be able to take care of those while I'm dealing with the technology. Onwards we go. So I don't know uh, how many of you know the background to Farmat 4D, um, but Farmat 4D began life as a multi-partner project that was funded through the National Land Care Program. They had sustainable ag innovation grants in 2014, I think, that were out, and a, uh, a, a group of 12 natural resource management groups, including SA Arid Lands, the Meat and Livestock Australia, um, the Australian Wool Initiative, and the CRC for Spatial Information, um, along with a number of other partners, put in an application to, to uh, for, for a project to see if we could um, pull together a whole bunch of um, 
publicly available information. So satellite imagery, um, remotely sensed information and uh, ground cover information that was held by lots of different agencies, either around your state or around the country. Um, so there was a lot of information that was available, but could we bring it together in a way that was useful for um, pastoral land managers? Um, we were lucky enough to win um, the project and it went for two years and what one of the um, one of the basis for the project was that it was guided by uh, grazing advisory groups um, particularly on the tool design and content uh, they pushed very hard that it needed to work on a low bandwidth um, and it needed to be online, so not software that needed um, regular updates. It needed to be able to be accessed um, via, uh, via the internet and that we start from a satellite imagery base, work through mapping, and then we built um, other tools from there that, they, that we could find that would work and that were interesting. So that was how the uh, NRM Spatial Hub came into being. And at the end of the project, um, there were 200 properties using it across the country. So we'd aimed, we thought we might get 40 people using it. I think that was the project um, outcome and we ended up with 200. Um, so we, a number of the partners put in some money to for a third year, did a feasibility study on commercialization and that has grown over the last three or four years into FarmMap 4D, which is um, now managed by a company called Spatial Hub Analytics. So that's that's where it came from. All of the drivers were around um, improving uh, pastoral management from a pastoralist's perspective, I guess, um, and whether we could bring that information together. And what it is. So FarmMap 4D provides um, a, an online tool that includes uh, satellite imagery and uh, quite high definition satellite imagery as the basis for um, mapping your property. It includes public um, GIS layers uh, that are available around the country. So things like land types, um, flood areas, um, digital elevation models, those sorts of things. And Within it, it has tools to analyse those layers and that information that comes in from the, the public sources. And we offer uh, data security as a, it's one of the things we think is really important. Um, when you register for farm map, you do the mapping um, and you map your infrastructure and you plan all your new projects. That is your intellectual property and you own it. Uh, we keep your data secure um, and we don't give access to anyone without your express permission and you actually give us um, the names of the people that you would want to have access to it so that we take very seriously. And what it provides to, to pastoralists uh, via the internet, that's what that funky um, computer icon is meant to represent, um, is a digital farm map that's accurate and shareable. Uh, so it's online, you can you can share it with other people, you can give other people access to either edit or uh, change, but like I said, that's only done with your express permission. Um, you can assess and plan new infrastructure, so getting your existing infrastructure in there or your watering points, fencing, all those sorts of things, you can assess it and then plan new projects and developments. You can monitor your ground cover and assess the impact of management or climatic um, impacts. Um, there's a health and safety or a work, work safety um, component that we probably didn't aim for as part of the project, but a lot of users um, talk about how being able to have the map and um, upload it onto a mapping app on a phone or a GPS, uh, it, it allows you to know that your new staff member it knows where they are when they're out and about, and you can probably find them if you if you need to. And there's a number of um, reports and, and that can be produced from within farm apps. So things like uh, infrastructure ledgers and, and those sorts of things that might be useful for taking you to the bank if you want to get a loan or you need to get your loan revalued. Really uh, the same for going to your tax accountant. And this is what it looks like. 
um, online. So it is a, a, you access it via an internet browser. It's uh, best used on a computer with a mouse. Um, it's not available as a phone app as yet, but you can import and export information from a GPS um, and onto mapping apps uh, that you can use on your phone. Uh, so like lots of people use it with a Venza apps, uh, a Venza Maps, which is a, a phone app. And it all starts from uh, this, this basis here where you map out your infrastructure so all your fence lines troughs tanks dams um, water pipes um, it doesn't come with any sort of guarantee that no one will put a ripper through uh, a pipe again but it should decrease the chances of it happening um, it also allows you to plan projects and like i said it's all exportable in maps and reports um, the way I sort of think about uh, farm map because I'm slightly old school is uh, when we used to do property management planning, you would end up with, um, you'd have your aerial photos or your satellite images and huge great things as big as a table and you'd layer clear plastic layers over it. And that's kind of what you're doing in farm map. It's just that you're doing it online. It's all there. Uh, the sticky tape never gets old and it doesn't, it doesn't come apart. So you start by mapping your property infrastructure and then you can do analysis on that in farm map. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the first one over it, which is probably slightly small to see on this, but uh, that's uh, Russell Lethbridge. He's been online with us for a, for a long time and he's looking at um, the distance from water um, tool or grazing circle tool, which allows you to set the distances from water you want your livestock to travel and uh, it assists in water infrastructure planning and grazing resource planning. Um, it allows you to calculate the net grazing area covered by your current water infrastructure. You can run scenarios, so basically turn waters on and off and see what proportion of your property is still um, watered under, under different scenarios and you can plan and cost new water infrastructure, which is what this tool over here is for. So one of the layers in Pharma is called a digital elevation model. And for want of a better um, comparison, it's kind of like a contour map. Um, oh, I will show it to you when we do the live demo. Um, and what it allows you to see is a profile of the line that you put across the landscape. So it's great for planning fences and water systems. And you can see a red line through here that is represented by this profile line. So it um, estimates the rise and fall across the landscape for that line. Um, when you put your mouse on the, on the line, you get a little blue dot that shows you where you are. On that, on that line. Um, because it estimates the, the rise and fall, you can see that it gives a, a much more accurate calculation of the length of pipe or um, fencing materials that you'll need. You can export it to a GPS to ground truth the pipelines and it turns um, days of work into hours. Actually, um, Russell here is a, is a big advocate. He's bought a few properties that needed a lot of infrastructure um, development and he uh, he says it's taking weeks and weeks of time um, so that's it's pretty popular that that profile tool especially if you need to do some development in terms of the ground cover analysis the tool that is um, within farmat 4d uses fractional ground cover analysis. So it takes, uh, it, remo it remotely senses, it's really quite hard to explain without you being able to see my hands that are moving, but, um, and it shows for a paddock or a selected area on your property or your whole property, the proportion of uh, bare ground, which is designated red, green grass, which is designated green here, and blue through time. And you can do that for any part of your property. It does it by analysing 
the pixels in that paddock and and each pixel is broken up into these components of uh, bare ground, green grass and um, dry grass or dry plants and it allows you to see how that changes through time. Um, you, one of the um, one of the users in uh, north in the northern Gulf, he says uh, he actually manages property for owners in New South Wales. They're not actually agricultural owners; they're investors. And he said that this is great for taking a snapshot and sending it to them um, to show what the planning and the subsequent results of decisions um, have taken on managing stock or installing infrastructure. So um, you can use it for all sorts of reasons. Uh, the other one which I did quietly mention before is uh, that it, it seems people are using it a lot to um, assist people, new staff or contractors uh, to find their way around the property. So your, your fences uh, go in the right place, your contractors do the work in the right paddock and you don't lose uh, new staff. So Michael at Lorraine Station is up in the, in the Northern Gulf. It is uh, by Michael's own admission relatively featureless and he's had a, a few people go uh, take a wrong turn and end up um, a little bit lost. And he said now that they upload uh, the farm app um, to Avenza apps on their phones, uh, that's that's really um, really overcome that problem. So he feels much more confident sending out new stuff. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the uh, live demonstration, which will just take a little minute. All going well. Um, Joe, do you have any comments on what I've talked about so far? Uh, no, Kate, I think you've done a great job. Um, I think the demo will, um, will, will answer anything else and otherwise um, we'll cover it in questions, yeah. Okay, so can you see that screen now? It should yep. look a bit firm up over. Great. So I was logged in. Right. Now you're going to see exactly how you get into Farm Map uh, 4D. It comes up uh, via, via your browser. You log in using your details. Um, I get to select a property because I have access uh, to quite a few. I'm just going to use the demo today. You would just have the properties that you are um, responsible for in there. Probably only one. So this is a this is a property in um, sort of central north Queensland uh, that allow us gave us permission to. Um, to use their property as a demonstration uh, property and, and to train people on, which is very, very generous of them. Uh, they've done all of their infrastructure mapping and it's quite detailed. Um, if When you first get into Farm Map, you'll see that there's these tabs across the top, if you can see my mouse moving across there, and that um, pretty much designates the order in which you do um, work when you when you first get into Farm Map. So you start with the mapping, uh, you get your fences in there, and I'll, I'll just I'll zoom in so you can get an idea of how um, well you can see fence lines and, and other infrastructure. Uh, when you zoom in, so it, uh, you can get down to some pretty, pretty good detail. You can definitely see where fence lines and roads, um, tanks, <coughs> tanks and troughs are in on the property, down to trees. You can see cattle in yards sometimes. Um, those sorts of things. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try counting them, but uh, it certainly makes um, finding the infrastructure and mapping it um, quite easy. Uh, you start by mapping your fence lines because then you can, uh, what we call, generate paddocks. And the reason you need to generate the paddocks is because it forms a polygon and it allows the, the tools that are embedded in FarmMap, so basically the software, to recognise that that is a unit that can be analysed for either ground cover or as part of the um, distance from water analysis. So as you move across the top here, additional tools have um, quite a number of the planning tools. So if you wanted to do um, to play around with different designs for your property, you can do that in there just by putting in um, lines and points. 
and you can calculate areas, you can do all those sorts of things, and it doesn't mess with your base infrastructure map. It's like it's like one of those plastic layers that you lay over the top of the of the old satellite imagery. The imagery analysis is um, the ground cover analysis, and there is a stocking rate calculator, so a carrying capacity um, calculator, which um, you, you need to put a fair bit of uh, manual information in. It's based on the grazing land management um, work in Queensland. It uses A, B, C, and D um, land condition, and you can and you can calculate your areas and, and your carrying capacity of your paddocks using that. So down this side, like most mapping um, software or programs, are the are the layers that you can access and you can turn them on and off. Um, I myself lost all my property infrastructure one day and rang Mike Digby, our operations manager, in a panic, and he came in and showed me that I had just clicked the box. So it's, it pays to pays to check before you get too carried away. So the first thing um, I will show you is that um, there is the grazing plan output. So this is the distance from water analysis, or um, sometimes it's called grazing circles. And what it does is around each of your water points. When you put your water points in, you'll get to say whether they're permanent or ephemeral or planned. Um, the blue ones here are permanent, or they thought they were, and um, this one is ephemeral. The orange ones, when you have planned ones in there, they are pink. Um, and for each of those, you can designate whether it's um, available to livestock, and if it is, then, then you can Put grazing circles around it. And each of these circles in this example is one kilometre out, so that's one kilometre, two kilometres, three kilometres, and that's how far they want to limit um, their cattle to uh, walking to, for pastures from, from water. And earlier I spoke about uh, being able to run scenarios. So these guys actually had a, a really poor uh, wet season in 2014. So they decided to see, um, they went out every month. I'm sure they were out there more often than that, but they recorded the, the um, which watering points um, dried up and in what order. And you can see as you move through uh, a few of the months that parts of their property uh, got very, very dry indeed. Um, they had to destock despite having grass and this was a driver for them improving their um, their water infrastructure, getting some actual permanent water points in here. They were relying on um, water holes in the, in the creek up here, which they thought were permanent, but it turns out in 2014, they were not. So to do um, the infrastructure planning, so the, the water infrastructure planning, um, I spoke about the profile tool and I'll just quickly show you how that works. Um, it's based on a digital elevation model, which I talked about before. Yep, sorry about the colours. It gets a bit uh, gets a bit psychedelic. Um, this tool, but um, the white bit is the are the highest points in in um, in this field of vision, and it goes down into green and um, light blues, and that's. Um, how the digital elevation model works. When you zoom in, it reassesses the area, and this is the highest area there in, in, this, in this screen. So it's pretty handy for if you're, as a bit of a guide, for when you're putting in water infrastructure, if you want to run it downhill, um, it makes it easier to see. And then as to plan the um, water infrastructure, um, if you're putting in a pipeline, uh, say I'm going to put one in from this dam and if I click there, I can just take it across here. And if I double click that, it will stop that and hit OK. And it will actually come up with one of those um, with a profile for, for that line. 
And boom, almost boom. There we go. <laughs> so uh, the um, you can see that as I go along the line, the little blue dot comes up on um, on the screen above. So you can always see where you are. This gives you an outline of the profile of that pipeline and you can see where it goes up and down on the map. You can export this and check it in real life. You can erase this polyline and try a whole different um, uh, line to make it all downhill. I might go that way. Um, so that's the, that's the profile tool. Which uh, is, is very popular. <laughs> Probably unsurprising. It saves a lot of time in, uh, in working out where you might put pipelines or fence lines and being able to calculate how much material you're going to require. So I won't show you everything in here, but we, I talked about the ground cover analysis. So we'll pop in and have a look just at, um, at doing that for a paddock um, property. Um, so you can look at the fractional ground cover, so that is, it, it splits the pixels up into bare ground, green grass and dry grass and the proportion of that in each pixel and then maps it through time. You can do it at a property level, um, paddock level, you can do it via land type or you can do a user defined area, so you can just outline an area there. I'm just going to pop a, a paddock, do it for a paddock. Hit next, and I just use this little tool to select, and that knows that I want to use it on that paddock. And it does take a little while because it's going back through 30 years worth of uh, satellite imagery and remotely sensed uh, data and pulling it up so that we can see it. I'm going to lift this with this little thing here because there's also uh, rainfall data now that comes up um, as, as part of this analysis. Um, as you can see, it shows how the, the proportions and how they change with seasons or with um, other, other impacts uh, through time. Where there's gaps, it just means that they're if the data wasn't good enough, um, wasn't reliable enough for it to be calculated. You can also uh, choose to go for different components of time, so you don't have to look at the 30 years. Um, it makes it a bit easier if you just want to look at a few seasons uh, to pull that out, and you can see that the, the rainfall uh, dates also align uh, with, the, with the ground cover information. So that's the ground cover tool. Now there are more uh, complicated ground cover tools in here. The, the cover analysis is actually a comparison tool. So you could compare, say, that paddock to another point or to a buffer around it. You can do the same thing for a paddock. Um, but we've I've probably talked almost enough. Uh, do you have any comments, Joe, on how people make use of uh, the ground cover tool? Or, or the profile tool? Uh, yeah, so I guess the, the I'll, I'll stick with the ground cover tool for now. Um, obviously, it's, it's great for when you're trying to split up. Uh, if, you, if you're developing country, splitting it up into smaller paddocks, um, putting in waters, um, you might want to encourage preferential grazing towards somewhere else within the paddock because they're going for the more palatable species in a, in a, on a particular land type, um, so obviously these things show up in, in the, uh, in the level ground cover, um, and so when you, when you run it, obviously you can use that then to, I, I suppose, um, determine how, um, how you're utilising that country, if you're changing things to try and improve it, uh, because it's historically been low, you can use those as a reference point. Um, that's where the, the historic data is, is great. Also, it allows you to sort of check, I suppose, the human condition it is. We tend to, to remember things not always exactly the way they were. 
um, and you know, here's an objective um, measure of that. Uh, the, the comparison to the cover analysis is great to see how so you can actually do you know, a 50 or 100k buffer um, or a 10k buffer around your place and it'll actually contrast the, the, the cover, um, you know, their green, non-green uh, components compared to how other other areas in the district are doing. It can also be good just to try and, I suppose, inform your management. Um, so pushing things, you know, it can help you check that and, and, um, and see how that's going. Obviously, um, uh, this is in seasons, um, so you can compare it between seasons. Um, so great, great tool, great to um, identify and particularly sensitive parts of the property that might need need to be um, fenced off and, and grazing management changed. Uh, likewise, you know, a lot of these tools obviously go hand in hand. So, for example, you might be wanting to try and improve ground cover, so you're, um, you might have long walking distance to water, so you're out at 5 k's between waters um, and you want to shorten that up, you can utilise those, those analysis to, to uh, identify where you're going to split that up and then obviously then you'll overlay on the, on the ground in, um, knowledge that you've got with, with the satellite imagery that you can see. Um, you can then draw in those profile tools to, uh, because often we're trying to utilise gravity fed waters and things like that as well. Um, and then we can obviously slingshot what we do on the ground when we go back out of the paddock in person. Thanks, Drew. Um, before I uh, log out, I just wanted to show you just it, um, once you're in here, if you need help, there are user manuals and there's um, online YouTube videos of how to use Permap, but this little number is uh, is direct contact to our team. Um, you put in your name, your email, and if you're having trouble in here, you can take a screenshot of it and send that through uh, directly. It goes direct to the, to the support team. So that is a nifty little... Um, a uh, way of getting support and you, and you know it's going directly to them. You don't have to go into your email to send them um, a screenshot of, of the error and all those sorts of things. So that's um, that's pretty handy. Okay, I'm just going to change screens. Bear with me. Hopefully it'll, it'll work. Um, okay. So back to the screen show and, and back to uh, just just some um, information on how you access uh, Farmat 4D and what you get. So Farmat 4D is accessed by a yearly subscription on a per property basis of $750 per year. Um, it gives you access to all of the tools that are in um, in Farmat 4D and any new additions as they uh, come online. Um, so it includes the farm mapping, the resolute, the imagery, all of the tools that I've showed you, and um, a few, a few more, probably plenty more. Um, you also, it also includes an online one-to-one -one training session uh, with uh, with Joe um, or Mike, or I'm one of the um, property planning specialists, plus ongoing training support and mapping services. So if you're having trouble, you can contact the guys and know they will help you. Um, if you have multiple properties or specific needs, uh, they can get in touch and we can talk it through. Uh, there's a contact us form on our website. If you go in there, there's also the stories from um, Michael Crisp on Lorraine and uh, Russell Lethbridge, whose um, examples and quotes we've, I've used in this um, talk today. Uh, if you're ready to sign up, you can just use, uh, use this link. It has been a fairly quick run through. So if you didn't catch all of the information you need in the webinar, we have all the usual ways uh, for you to get in touch with us. Uh, we've got a website, there's Facebook, we're on Twitter. Um, and if you email info at farmapp4d.com.au, it pretty much ends up in my, um, in my email inbox. Uh, in terms of support, um, I mentioned there's a, there's a um, there are videos on YouTube that you can have a look at and they go into quite a lot of detail um, about 
what PharmMap 4D can do and the tools that are in it and how, how it works. And there's a user guide as well that you get access to when you sign up. Um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, if uh, It would have been great to have the opportunity to talk to you all in person um, in December. However, if you do want to trace this up in person, I am going to be at the Persa Livestock Technology Expo. So the one in Hawker is on the 16th of February and there's one in Woodna on the 18th of February. So I think uh, we'll be ready to field some questions, Paul. Thank you very much, Kate. That was really good. And it is it is great that you can do the um, live demo, but yeah, be so, I imagine it's so much better when we get that one-on-one -on -one, um, at the livestock show. So people, it'd be a great opportunity for people to go see that when they are in the air at the time. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to be engaging um, when, there's, when there's no feedback on a webinar, but it'd be great to have a conversation with some folks, for sure. Okay, just while people are thinking of questions, I will just ask, um, so what happens if landholders have already got some mapping set up? Can it be transferred into farm map? Going to let Joe answer that. Uh, yeah, it can. Yeah. So we can take in shape files, KML files, KMZ files, GBX files. Um, so GPX is generally the file type that comes um, so when you use handheld GPS, you know, handheld GPS. Um, and draw a line or, or, or draw a polygon on it in, in the field, uh, you can then take that in as a GPX file and use that to, to, to guide um, when you're actually drawing lines on there. Um, you can obviously pull, pull it out of various app, mapping apps as well. Um, but if, say, you've been using some, some other previous mapping um, software, um, might be current or it might be stuff that has been not discontinued, that you, you've got the the files, as long as you've got the files, um, the data can be pulled in. Um, obviously, when you start using farm maps, we take the cadastral boundaries, um, which um, so that the, the, the this thing called the cadaster, that, um, we will basically make sure that when you log in, zooms into your 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 station, and uh, yeah, then it'll actually you can click on a layer, open up that. Um, cadastral boundary so you can see it obviously you'll know where your boundary is unless you're new to that property um, so unless you've got staff doing mapping for you and things like that you know, it might be more handy but if you've been there for a long time obviously you won't need too much help um, and you can use the, the satellite imagery just to, to fine, fine tune where you're actually putting it on using the, 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 the mouse but um, yeah you can still bring in that, that to other data and, and um, the sort of shortcut things. That's great. Does anyone have any other questions? A great opportunity. We've got two experts. Okay, well, just give people a couple of minutes. I suppose one, one thing that whilst people are just um, thinking of questions or, or, or entering them, um, there's, there's basically this, this is a fairly individual product in terms of there's, there's, it brings in very powerful um, GIS um, abilities into a really usable and user-friendly interface. Um, so there's also, you know, bringing in that, that imagery, so, so ground cover imagery analysis on top of um, on top of all of those, those other tools like stock and rate calculators and land type mapping it and that into the one place. Um, it's it's fairly um, um, specialised um, and, and unique tool, and being able to go through 30 years of ground cover 
data, for for example, you know, it's great. And particularly if you, you, you got a new staff member, you know, you might have a new overseer or man, assistant manager or two IC or you know, a new manager on a property you bought. Uh, it allows you to obviously go back and see that, see that um, that information, which which obviously is different to on the ground. But at least you've got an objective measure there um, to use as a reference point. So um, there's not many products around that can can do it, and certainly not as easy. And just on um, capability, so if somebody's got like a three or four year old computer or a laptop, um, will Farmat 4D work fine on that, just as well as something brand new? Yeah, look, um, the, the biggest thing, um, the, the, the tips is obviously you're working on the cloud, which um, gives you the power that if, if, if a device fails, um, it's it's all still safe that data you don't have to go and redo things uh you know so uh internet connection speed does make a difference um you know it, it will work on a slower speed obviously it just slows down the process to a degree um there's little tips and tricks so uh google chrome browser tends to work uh better than some others um but it, it, what it does is obviously because you're working on the cloud, there's this thing called cache memory that um, it does fill. And so sometimes you just need to clear that. Um, and on some older devices, sometimes it, you know, things memory fills up a bit quicker or it might already be a bit full. So um, you might just, just need to clear that memory um, periodically. The other thing is in a browser, some may know, some may not. You can actually open this thing called an incognito window, so it's recommended for for using Farm Maps because what it does, it doesn't actually save um, save things in this cache memory that I'm talking about, um, which also just helps with the speed of the process. Uh, so there's all those little things, but basically, as long as the device can get onto the internet, has a reasonable internet connection um, in terms of stability and speed. Uh, then, then you, you're cool. You can you can log in on on things like phone browsers on phones and tablets and and, and like, but it's not um, it's not as because it, because it is a powerful tool. Um, obviously, on a on a laptop or a desktop is is far preferable. But you can use those sorts of devices as well. For example, you may say say you don't own a GPS or or, um, or you don't have the on the ground um, position data for a new piece of infrastructure, so a new water or um, new nest or something like that, uh, you can actually open on the browser if you've got um, phone phone signal, um, mobile internet signal where, where the infrastructure is and you can actually locate yourself on that if you open on a phone browser. Um, I find it's easier just to, to use a mapping app um, bring that in but you can do it that way but it's much easier to use farm maps on on a computer um, but age of age of devices is really not an issue as long as it can get on the internet and no doubt like in the one-on-one -on -one where they have with you you can talk them through all this and um, they don't have to have any computer skills to be able to do it that's part of the one-on-one -on -one process is basically learning how to use it properly I guess that, that's right um, the one-on-one -on -one, um, one thing that I, I do encourage uh, that makes it far more, I suppose, personalised is if you do get in and have a play, um, don't be frightened. Um, you can't break it. Uh, you know, anything that, that you do put in the wrong place can be fixed, can be moved, can be you know, modified. That's that's cool. But get in and have a look um, so that you you know that'll trigger. Uh, you know, catalyze the questions that you might want to ask during that session. Uh, obviously, if you come up with questions outside of that, that's cool. Um, shoot them through. Uh, but what, what generally these training sessions, the way they look is I try and go through any questions you've got if you've started using it. If you haven't, I'll run through basically the, the long version of the demo. So what Kate did, but I'll go take you through pretty much all of the tools and show you the capabilities and how to use those, explain those, 
and I'll do that by sharing my screen. So either either I'll log into a demo property or I'll log into yours. Um, generally, I, I prefer to log into yours so that any work that we do in that training session isn't for naught, that it actually is real work. So, you know, if it saves you an hour or two hours or 10 hours down the track, then, then that's great. Um, so you don't have to redo a fence line, for example, rather than putting in phantom fence lines that, that, that we'll just delete. But And we'll go through those things, so how to draw a line, fence line, water line, water points, all of those things, um, how to do it properly, how to generate the paddocks, how to, you know, go through the, the, the labels, information, how to export data, how to import data, um, how to save projects and things like that. And then obviously go through and explain all of the imagery analysis to, to a little bit more depth because obviously we're constrained by, by time, um, particularly this hour and, and in these sort of sessions. Um, obviously, Kate just has to do a quick um, abridged version because, um, you know, it, it's it's a bit lengthy explanation to go through every tool because there is a, a huge, huge capability there. Thank you very much. Did, has anyone got any questions? Well, um, no one has. Well, we might we might call it. Thank you very much, Kate and Joe. Really appreciate your time and um, yeah, on behalf of the board, thank you very much for coming on and um, giving us this talk. Thanks for having us. It's uh, it's been great. Hopefully, people got some good information. Our pleasure. Thank you.